I'd like to welcome you to the first in our fall lecture series. Today uh, we have uh, Warren Schwartz and Angela Hyatt from Schwartz Silver. Uh, Warren is conducting an advanced studio uh, this fall and was asked by the department because he's a distinguished practitioner uh, as well as um, a beautiful designer and uh, brings a level of, of, of consistent and insistent professionalism uh, to his own work and I hope in, to the teaching of the studio. So we're very fortunate to have uh, Warren and Angela here today. Well, it's interesting that, um, that this, is, this is distinct from the, from the theoretical lectures because uh, uh, he's, he's quite right. This is, not, this is not a theoretical lecture. This is like a uh, lecture of, uh, in a sense, reality because I can tell from the name Survivor 33, 33 season. Uh, I have been doing that for uh, 33 years. Um, and, um, uh, and just, and, and that's the first slide really is just to, uh, to show you a range of. Of, of the work that we've done, and actually this is not uh, this is not about 33 years worth, this is about less, but uh, it's kind of um, it's kind of representative of what we have been doing. The first pictures are kind of uh, really uh, we just the building was designed kind of from the um, inside out as kind of a, a user experience, uh, a storyboard with an exhibit designer. The, the, uh, we started out by having a large, very, very large program uh, produced by the exhibit designer of a path through, uh, from, from, let's uh, call it, uh, through the old building uh, to, uh, to the shore, um, and then, and then uh, through various depths of the ocean into the deep ocean, which you see here, and then back out. Um, so this is the whole the full impact of the aquarium that you see in the, in the sort of master plan model, which includes also an IMAX theater, which is the uh, little kind of a uh, chip off the iceberg on the left. This is um, the original Hyde Park Branch Library. Hyde Park is um, part of the city of Boston. Um, it was made part of Boston in the um, early 1900s. Um, this is a, um, not a, Carnegie, a true Carnegie Library, but it was very much built like the Carnegie library follow that model, um, a centralized kind of solid block, um, kind of up aloof a little bit from the city, uh, from the neighborhood, um, uh, and it was built in 1899. Uh, this is how we found it um, in 96, is when the project started. Uh, it had had a, a one-story addition put on to the side of it just one year after it was originally built. So, so we came up with some three different diagrams of how to add on to this building, very, you know, party that we uh, kind of met with the city about. One was um, the bookend scheme, which we actually called the earmuff scheme in the office. Um, just, you know, dumb and simple. You know, you can keep the, the, the symmetry, um, you can add, you can split the new program in two and add a little bit on each side. And yes, it doesn't take full advantage of the site available um, on the right, which is the south side of the site, but that's one, that's one option. Another option is what we call the, the pavilion scheme, um, creating, get, getting rid of the stack swing, creating this bar at the back that would connect everything, but treating most of the addition as this pavilion out on the front, on the front facing the street. We, as, as architects, like this because it gave us the most opportunity to have kind of a distinct addition, um, but the city didn't like it because it would uh, increase their um, staffing levels at the library um, exponentially, they told us, because they can't see around the corners and just one of those realities that we had to deal with working uh, with, with uh, the client. Um, the last dumb diagram was say, okay, fine, let's, let's not be too clever about this. You could also just put all the addition on one side of the building. Um, if you do that though, uh, the addition is gonna be bigger than the original building. Um, and how would that look and feel? 
But this was kind of a, a starting point, a way to think about how to add on to a historic building and, and how, to, um, how to think about um, how the facade might respond to the existing building, in this case, um, the uh, bas relief panels and the kind of uh, think patient of, within the facade, and then seeing the structural expression on the outside. Um, uh, we also kind of liked how it made larger open spaces inside the building. So our little diagram, um, and uh, you know, this is a little hand sketch. It was probably this size, actual size, on a piece of tracing paper. Um, and I hope everyone still sketches when they think about it here, because it's, it's hard to kind of capture the essence of of some of these ideas in, 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 on the computer directly. Um, but this was kind of the original little co concept sketch, was to say, well, what if we, um, what if we kept um, the um, stack swing and that little piece on, on the side of the building that they had built, and we mirror that as a connector piece to kind of fortify um, or build up the presence of the existing building, and then create an addition that kind of the uh, antithesis of that, kind of the, the glass conservatory wing to the solid masonry block. And then you can kind of add other pieces as you need to to get the full program in. Um, other kind of little, again, these were seriously like two inch square little sketches of, of how to kind of think about adding on to the building. Um, so, kind of taking our original. Uh, Color pencil uh, elevations uh, and kind of building a little animation of it. Isn't that word very um, We would take that existing uh, little addition that we built, we'd actually make it two story addition, build, we, we kept it in place and built a story on top of it, mirror it on the other side, <clears throat> and then um, create addition, um, the, the larger addition um, on the end. Uh, this is the lower level. Um, so this is the finished product. Um, so uh, this got a, a 2000, uh, National um, AIA Honor Award in 2001. Uh, and um, it was a really uh, interesting project to work on from, from start to finish. Um, this is kind of- I think the reason, I think the reason it won is because, um, is because it was one of the Original Carnegie Libraries, and um, and there's been this argument going on for uh, five, ten years about postmodern buildings, modern buildings, how you add on to these things, where how do you design a new building? Um, we're past that, but this is this is the part of the argument, and I think that there was a fresh, believe it or not, a fresh view as to how you could actually uh, uh, put a new building on an old one, uh, make the two things uh, uh, actually. Merge and become one building again uh, of two contrasting parts. So here, the interior, you know, the original um, south side elevation of the, the building became kind of an interior piece of the architecture. We kind of treated the main glass and part of the addition as this kind of outdoor room, so you see outdoor materials in the room and all that kind of thing. So um, this is our um, version of this double height new reading room space. <coughs> With, um, and it's not all double height, um, but we wanted to still kind of create that feeling of lightness. So we um, did this kind of cowboy system of uh, a luminous uh, uh, ceiling um, that's kind of built from just very ordinary parts. Um, the budget for this project was, was, was not extravagant, so um, there's a lot of uh, on the fly thinking of how to bring it all together. Um, and this is the south, the new south side of the building that faces um, the garden take over. Uh, this is a public building and, and budgets for public buildings are um, notably average budgets, maybe slightly below average budgets. But the reason the reason I mention this is because um, as soon as you get out of school, there's an overlay of the numbers of dollars. And uh, it becomes amazingly uh, important because it, it's. Uh, I don't think it. I don't think it limits your creativity. I think it just limits your 
um, your options about how to use the dollars. Uh, and so you, you end up having to uh, um, be as clever as possible, and yet it doesn't always work that way. <laughs> So this is another public building, um, which, uh, which was completed in 2005, so we're, we're moving forward in time a little bit. This building was also still um, uh, a building which, which um, I, think, I think this was not drawn uh, in the computer until the very end, <laughs> maybe until the yeah. end. So <clears throat> it's, it's amazing how quickly things have changed once they started to change. The, the, this is a, uh, the new LSU Museum of Art, which was going to be um, on this uh, sort of uh, empty meadow at the bottom right of this kind of triangle of space, um, four miles uh, out of the city and near LSU University. They asked us to do some site plans to, to look at ways of putting uh, not only one building, but actually putting another second building on this site. And so you see here various ways of going about it. Um, one, one of the interesting things is that uh, the reason you see some water there is because we had to uh, have uh, we had to retain water, which uh, which comes in large quantities at the, the southern um, uh, part of Louisiana. I just want to say one thing. This this is a, a site outside of Baton Rouge, right? The, the suburb. Right. Yeah. So just kind of um, kind of go with the survivor theme. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that that firms, you know, that are around as long as this firm has been around, need to do is to become adaptable and to kind of, you know, when project parameters change drastically, we need to just jump on it and, and roll with it, and and that's what happened with this project, which you're going to probably um, so talk this, about. This, yeah. this is surprising. And, and and also kind of with the the firm as a general the type of projects, you know. The aquarium versus a historic renovation addition with the High Park Library and you now a new ground up museum. So Well it, this museum started out being a museum uh, only uh, and uh, much larger than the one that they had at the university, which was just hidden inside the, the tower, which is the icon of the university. But um, but they also at a certain point, a little bit after this, they decided that they would add large uh, or, or around the time this was being done, a large um, uh, our touring. This figures in later, but uh, you can see here that um, uh, that we had to bring people along. Actually, sort of, sort of, kind of. Uh, uh, we, we were the education component of the <laughs> of the client, and uh, and so starting at the top, and then moving our way down through the various uh, kind of schemes. All they they all had the same plan, but we actually uh, arrived at the um, at the bottom. Um, after a after a lot of after, after a major presentation uh, uh, to the entire uh, LSU system, um, that was unexpected uh, because they were basically starting and ending at the top. That that's what the buildings at LSU their looked like. Expectations. Their expectations were basically a sugar plantation. <laughs> and in fact, they had one and chose a lot of a lot of uh, even quick business. So this is the building. Um, which is uh, very, um, very conscious of the weather there being incredibly hot and incredibly rainy um, and, um, and sunny, and sunny rainy. And uh, just some quick early renderings about what the building might look like. You can see that it has not what I would call not too much of a facade, more of a, of a creating an environment, a kind of a, uh, a Almost, almost a natural environment. Everything was raised on a platform for two reasons. One is so the water would drain into the uh, uh, into a drainage pond, but the other reason is because LSU, in terms of bringing a little bit of what they recognized to the site, LSU was raised, all the, all the buildings there are raised uh, up about uh, two or three feet to be above the ground, uh, in the ground water. And so this building, this building has all the other buildings at LSU were, uh, were raised on platforms. Um, the great thing was is that uh, this th that project ended about the time we finished design and development. And then somebody else had a better idea, in fact the mayor, uh, and um, uh, said, why don't we move this, the LSU Museum downtown, combine it with that new theater, put it on this site here, 
um, which was uh, which was seen as being the new center of the city, uh, um, defined uh, by um, by Duane, Andres Duane, uh, and their um, uh, their group as as being a place which um, which which would be the new, the new city center in a sense. And so uh, it's interesting, the city center became a museum and a theater. Um, next to the old state capitol, by the way, in case you weren't sure what that building was. So, so you know, I think something like 11 day, if we, if we design very quickly uh, tests of the program, uh, and you can see the theater is the lower building to the right. Um, then this is another version of it where the museum was inside this glass, the circulation would be on the outside, and the theater would be, again, to the right of it on a, on a different site. Uh, they were two different donors, and so, and so the two donors uh, wanted to have their own uh, uh, image, uh, the, 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 their, uh, their own icon, let's say. Um, but ultimately, um, there, was, there was this one grand meeting where there were really uh, a couple hundred people there. And they chose the third version, which is the most unlikely version, which is uh, uh, kind of a giant canopy of the museum up at the top, a big hole in the middle, and the theater over to the right. Um, and then through a series of meetings, which probably lasted a few months, maybe as much as many as nine months, um, and we showed various other alternatives. And you can, this is this is part of this long sort of process. It seems, it seems long when you think back, but it actually was relatively, relatively short because this project started in 2000 and, it, and was finished in 2005. So this is the first version. Another possible version of the museum with the theater behind it. Maybe turning the theater and merging the two so the museum is still up and the theater is, is merged with the, with the museum itself, which is the bar up top. So here's the low version of this, and then finally a big block version of the same, with all the same program. In the end, uh, they decided to merge the, uh, the iconography um, of both the museum and the theater together, create one central lobby which would, which would uh, uh, link to both, and create a lot of big vibrant sort of space in there. And uh, this is how the building then began to develop, and we were, we were sort of on its way. These are the functions which were then um, distributed within the building over. Each color is a different uh, major function. So it's a mixed use facility uh, with art galleries and uh, restaurants and uh, theater, the main, the main stage being uh, in, in, the, um, in the lower part. Um, <clears throat> this is uh, one of the renderings. We, we went through many materials, including stone, copper, glass, the whole gamut of materials. And, uh, uh, and had long discussions about each one. This is the lobby, which was supposed to link everybody, and did, in fact, and does. Um, this is the view over the Mississippi, directly on the, on the river. And then um, the building under construction. You can see it very much matches it. Um, uh, Haydock said something a long time back when he was alive, which was, it's interesting to me, it's still interesting to me, um, <clears throat> try to make the buildings look like your drawings. Easier said than done. <laughs> so this is the uh, uh, these are the two uh, contractors putting the glass channels up in front of a uh, of basically a solid building has one window pretty much maybe two. Um, but the building uh, appears to be glass. It is in fact it's a rain screen uh, covering the, um, covering that aluminum um, uh, surface uh, with various uses of the ground floor, the fourth floor, and the roof. And this is the building at night, the lobby in the daytime, the theater, three hundred fifty seats, uh, one of the museum spaces with, with uh, skylight. Uh, and then using the, uh, uh, the roof at the top uh, because of the weather. And that should be covered with, at, at this point, um, with wisteria, the, uh, the trellis, the bright shade. And uh, and view back over the river and the, uh, um, and the old state capitol. This this I think then opened in 2005. Where National Art Award 2008. And um, uh, you can see there's 
some relationship between these two buildings, even though they're so different. And uh, this is on the cover of uh, Architecture Magazine. Uh, May 2005. Oh, one more here. One or two more, depending on my time to fight here. We're doing this project right now. Um, <coughs> this is a. Uh, um, where do I start? <laughs> start? Start with, uh, start with maybe with 911. Uh, uh, the federal office buildings uh, all over the country uh, were uh, uh, both needed to be to be uh, modernized, which means new new modern systems inside, and also to be uh, <clears throat> secured from any threats. From any threat. And so. So the project here was to develop a new, was to design and develop a new entrance pavilion at the entrance to um, the McCoy Federal Office Building in, uh, in Jackson, Mississippi. Um, it seems like a lot of architects, uh, ones that also that you have heard of and have read about, um, uh, entered this sort of design excellence program by the General Services Administration. We were able to uh, do this particular job and have been doing it, and in fact, it should be done this month, or maybe next. Um, we're not sure, but I'll show you, we'll fast forward to those pictures. Um, just the location um, of, the, uh, of the office building, downtown, the middle thing. Uh, Jackson is pretty, it's, it's pretty uh, low population, sort of wiped out kind of area, but it's trying to come back in the federal, federal office, and, and the feds are trying to change the image of the federal government by changing, by adding, uh, by adding pieces of uh, building which would be welcoming to buildings that you see, like that uh, concrete building on the right, which is which is our uh, which is the federal office building. Um, most federal office buildings of late, after the 40s and 50s, started to look like this because they took a little bitter. They went away from design excellence to, um, I guess, uh, low bid, and uh, and they've been trying to switch that back now for since about for about 10 or 20 years. Uh, back to where federal buildings become leadership buildings, what I would call leadership buildings, leading other architectural, uh, other buildings, um, other architects, other uh, other architects and buildings into doing, making better, uh, better architecture. Um, this is the the way the building was before. You enter underneath the tower. If there was a threat underneath the tower. It would uh, basically. Uh, um, the danger of lives of 3,000 people in the building. Um, so the object was to, to make the pavilion outside the building, uh, which then can happen. Um, the building itself would be destroyed and the rest of the building would remain intact. So this is a very tall uh, version um, of a new entrance pavilion, sort of uh, on the nose of the, of the triangle. Uh, another one which is a very uh, uh, different in, uh, Dramatic shape, still, still kind of working off the triangles of the uh, the ang angularity of the other building, um, but um, providing an entrance. Um, another another way of sort of going about it, maybe taking the facade and folding it out um, so that it becomes these kind of uh, shadow boxes uh, as a as kind of a, a roof uh, under which and through which you enter. Um, this was a uh, um, different view with kind of a magnolia. Blossom, and um, uh, this is developed through the various discussions that we had about um, about the area, about the uh, about, about the flowers, and, and about the, uh, uh, the weather, and uh, and also about the river, which 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 somehow um, forms iteratively went back and forth between uh, between various curves and and, uh, and various uh, imagery. And so this magnolia blossom turned into something like uh, ribbons, which really were more like the rivers that, that, that run in the flat land. Um, the, here you can see that the, that the plan, uh, the plan goes directly into the into the new um, into the renovated uh, um, uh, elevator core, and uh, stays away from the building uh, itself. And so this became this became the the design of the alternative, which was chosen by the federal government, which I thought was extraordinary, and uh, because this, this, this now becomes uh, 
what I would call uh, in the in the realm of, of buildings done by the federal government. Again, uh, trying to make trying to change the, the nature and the image of of um, the federal government. Um, just some circulation and, and some landscape done by Hargraves uh, Associates. Landscape around the building. Um, Hargraves, you may be familiar with, uh, designed the Olympic. Um, the, the London Olympic uh, master plan and, and uh, the grounds. So this is how the new building and the old building relate. Of course, they don't, in a sense, in one sense, but they relate by contrast. And, and it's important that, this, that the new pavilion be so dramatic, in a sense, uh, that, you, that, the, that the older and uh, building, office building, serve as a backdrop. And so there's some drawings here of um, and the model. Um, as you can you can see from this model the the uh, there's a printed model um, something which I'm not just up here for <laughs> we've been we've been doing that um, and uh, then kind of a depiction of what it would look like with the shingles black shingles um, on the building um, and sort of I wouldn't call it an injection but a sort of a, a use of uh, Another material, uh, still everything being white or in the light color that is sometimes uh, necessary, mostly required in compliance like this. Um, this is what I was referring to as the river, uh, kind of, um, uh, in, kind of inviting, inviting the building to be more like rivers, and um, which then, uh, which then became what we were pursuing. As, uh, um, um, as the building itself. This, this is uh, uh, when, we, when we got far along in these presentations in Washington, a number of them. And uh, this building is both uh, kind of, uh, I guess I guess you'd call it uh, attractive and, and spiky at the same time. Um, you know, uh, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and the inside uh, being very um, keeping the, keeping a lot of the light out, uh, but letting light in through through the skylight. Um, but that sky kind of has a cowl in the direct sun in the space. Again, another rendering, um, a mock-up showing the glass in Kansas City. This was this building was also made by Zaner Company, made the original aquarium, and another building that you may know. They, they expanded into, uh, into glass, but you can see the um, all of these pieces are aluminum uh, cut by uh, by water laser. Okay, I'm not sure if that's what it's called. But that's what it was. Um, all fabricated by uh, by imaging people. Um, real close up of the uh, and then and then as the building was as the building was coming along, being built um, and being wrapped, clad. The, uh, uh, the, this building is where you come in. You don't have to actually go into the federal office building. You can get uh, tax forms and, and uh, social security. Um, you, you can be, be, be served by something like 18 or 19 offices that are within the building, but a lot of that can occur in the lobby space. Also, we want to use the, the lobby space for reception. So you see the building here, uh, not all that long ago, um, being being, being, uh, being built in near completion. Uh, the, the inside space here, uh, this is probably what it looked like maybe a couple weeks ago. And uh, um, all that white uh, cabinetry is, is, is all uh, Korean. Um, and uh, it's a very, quite a large space because people are coming and going in there and they go through the uh, through medical timers and security. Um, <coughs> in and this is, I think, the last picture of this. Yeah, and uh, so this is what the building is looking like now. Um, the landscape is just beginning to go in. The, the, uh, the pavement has been rejected uh, by the uh, landscape architect because it was built in front of the restaurant. Um, but actually, uh, it may stay this way, and I'm and going to love it. <laughs> so um, uh, we do. Let's see. We could. We could. Even, uh, we could. We could entertain questions. 
we do have a, we do have another project which we're just beginning at the medical college, but we might want to, we may want to discuss that. We may want to discuss that. Oh, that's a good question, actually. That's, that, that's, a, that's the, uh, the reason Baton Rouge is there is because, um, it's because, let's begin with, it's because they put the waterworks uh, on the Mississippi River in that location. And what the waterworks did was they took, they took water uh, underground and, um, uh, and made it so that it, so that it was drinkable water. And um, uh, it's basically the water plant. And that is right in front of the right in front of the Shaw Center on the banks of the of the Mississippi, the building being about a, a block back. So that's the, that's um, that's the water tower, but they used to be called sandpipes, and it looks like a rocket. And no one in town really liked it, except we loved it. And um, <laughs> and in fact, we loved it so much it was all basically kind of turning turning gray and dark, and, and it all it needed was a paint job. And um, and so it became it became the uh, so the standpipe uh, is really historic an historic structure going all the way back to the beginning of that route. And that's on access with a little alley that goes right through the lobby from, from the street behind the building. And, uh, and it, it, in a sense, the whole, the whole project. Good question. Yeah. 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 Um, I love the design that you did for the High Park Library, and I wondered if you have seen the downtown public library here in Providence, um, and the addition that they put on there. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, kind of sad <laughs> to me because you know what you mentioned about um, a lot of times with um, add-ons, you end up entering through the add-on or through like a um, hallway or something in between the two, and that has definitely happened there. So you don't get the the grandeur of going through the front. The few front steps and the front door. Yeah, yeah. We've gotten into doing more and more public buildings, although we still do. do uh, we, we have a house going up right now as well. Um, but the public buildings are just, um, uh, they require a lot, of, a lot of time and a lot of, uh, and, and, and somehow kind of. Uh, preaching to people who should know better, <laughs> uh, but but it, it's it's definitely a um, challenge to do public building, uh, and it's another kind of challenge. And that was one of the demands that they made about the project that we were on board with. You know, that that's, that's one of those things. Well, we still have to enter through the front door. Like that. Sounds good. Yeah, sounds good. We um, we had been up to. Uh, maybe 35 people at once, and uh, somewhere over the past three or four recessions, we've been down as low as uh, seven people. Um, we, we have truly survived in the sense that um, um, we just never know, and other architects don't know if they're gonna kind of make it through the recession or not. And uh, this latest one is uh, has been either the worst or at least comparable to the worst. And uh, still kind of going on, although things are things seem to be seem to be better at this point. And um, uh, and it's interesting how you kind of uh, uh, how 